Hello everybody and good evening. Um, this is about the check mark that uh, the YouTubers were saying if there's not a blue check mark beside my name be very careful or something like that. Well there is asking now can you sue Twitter if you're fooled by a fake blue check mark? Like, follow me, follow me, or add, or whatever. I don't know. Um, on November 29th of 2022, 12.19 p.m., since Elon Musk took over, Twitter has been a free-for-all of fake news and misinformation. The converted COVID, no, C-O-V-E-T-E-D, coveted blue check mark, which used to mean Twitter had verified an account was authentic. Now it looks like it's available for purchase to anyone at $8 a month through a Twitter Blue subscription. Verified accounts are not necessarily authentic any longer. Musk says that the new verification system is supposed to reduce or eliminate bots and promote free speech. While perhaps a good idea, in theory, the rollout of the new Twitter Blue has been, by most accounts, a fiasco. Trolls bought, bought blue checks, set up seemingly authentic accounts as verified users, and through imper, imperson, oh boy, <laughs> it's been one of those days, impersonations mimic politicians, celebrities, companies, and other public figures, including President Biden, Donald Trump, ESPN, the Las Vegas Raiders, and LeBron James. Until Twitter suspended the program, these uh, parody accounts, P-A-R-O-D-Y, parody accounts wrecked havoc, deceiving many users. Well, of course. For example, Eli Lilly, a seller of insulin, took a 4% hit to its stock price when imposter with a blue check mark tweeted that insulin was now free. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Scammers tricked thousands of Twitter users into donating to scam charities with their credit cards. Oh, no. Meanwhile, Musk was sh shedding Twitter employees by the thousands. If you were the victim of a fake account, fake account, with a blue check mark, you might think about suing Twitter. Section 230, Immunity. Federal law protects Twitter from being sued for content posted by others on its platform. Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. Decency Act. It's got to be D-E-C-E-N-C-Y. Communications Decency Act declares that interactive computer services like Twitter cannot be held liable for information provided by another content provider. This means that the social media companies cannot be sued based on posts by others, such as de uh, defamation, misrepresentation, and fraud. Although there has been some talk in Congress about stripping them of this immunity, there doesn't look to be enough support for Section 230 reform to pass. So, immunity it is. In Twitter's terms of a service, suppose you're not deterred by Section 230 immunity and want to try your hand at a lawsuit. You still have to deal with Twitter's terms of service. When you create an account and use Twitter, you agree to abide by the TOS, Terms of Service. Whether you realize this or not, this created a binding contract between you and Twitter. And this contract, which was drafted by Twitter, for Twitter, is unsurprisingly pretty one-sided. Disclaimer Warranties Your first hurdle, hurdle is to overcome Twitter's disclaimers. There's an entire paragraph, some of which is in capital letters, that essentially says, Twitter makes no promises about the accuracy of any content on the platform. 
You also agree that Twitter disclaims any legally binding warranties related to the platform. You use Twitter and what you find on it entirely is at your own risk. Limitation of a liability. Then you've got to get past another paragraph, all in capital letters. That legally limits Twitter's liability. It essentially says that Twitter cannot be held liable for all sorts of different types of damages, such as punitive damages based on your use of the platform. But that's not all. The TOS limits your total damages to the greater of $100 or the amount you paid Twitter in the past six months. So even if you win a lawsuit, you could recover probably wouldn't reimburse you for the legal costs. Probably not. Forum selection. Perhaps the principle is more important to you than the money. Well, in a way, yes. You are still determined to sue Twitter. Why do people have to do criminal things? No matter what, where, or why. They just got to cause havoc. It, what's wrong with them up here? Do they think this is cute, this is smart, this is grown up? Boy, are they wrong. Too bad some of them names don't pop up. They're the ones that should be sued. Get some private investigators on this case. Come on, Twitter, stand up for your people. Find out who done that. Even if you got one or two of them, that's better than none at all for doing this stupidity, stu uh, stupid stuff, stupidity stuff. I'll get it out, boy. I'm getting upset now. <laughs> you know how I am. <laughs> I tell you, though, innocent people, and they've got to forge their nicknames and do unlawful things that oh what's the matter with these people kids teenagers probably or could be grown-ups don't pass on the grown-ups don't pass on the people that can't think of anything better to do all right perhaps the principle is more important to you than the money and yes it is you are still determined to sue twitter well I don't have a mark. I wouldn't buy one either. So read on. The TOS contains what's called a forum selection clause. Forum selection clause dictates where you can bring a lawsuit. And Twitter's forum selection clause is exclusive. You agree that if you sue Twitter, you will do so in the state or federal court in San Francisco. A lot of good that will do you if you live in New York. Good point. <clears throat> Inconvenient forum waiver. When the most you can recover is $100, having to bring a lawsuit in another state isn't worth the cost. No, it's not. So the criminals get by. <laughs> but courts can sometimes ignore forum selection clauses if the le legitimate meets the legal standards of proving the chosen location is inconvenient. Maybe you think you could persuade a judge in your own state uh, that having to sue in San Francisco is inconvenient. But Twitter's SOS, or TOS, I'm sorry, TOS, is prepared for this argument. One of the sentences in the general selection section concludes by saying, oh, by the way, you waive any objection as to inconvenient forum. That means that not only do you agree to sue in San Francisco, but you also give up any right to argue that suing in San Francisco is inconvenient. Headline, title, whatever you want to call it. The next one is in black. Good luck. So where does that leave you? You could sue Twitter despite its immunity, but only in San Francisco. And the most you could get, even though you almost certainly won't win, is a hundred bucks. That's not even worth the principal. But yet the criminals get by with crimes, don't they? And if you're mad at Twitter, join the crowd. If you're mad enough to sue, let it go. 
A lawsuit is virtually futile. If you want to get back at Twitter, your best bet is to cancel your Twitter account, join a different platform. That would probably be my suggestion. Because it don't look good to sue. No matter what you do, you'd lose. <clears throat> Now, I think Elon Musk bought, and that is settled, isn't it? That he is completely in control now, the owner of Twitter. I wonder if he's having any regrets right now. They're going to go after him. How can Elon Musk change Twitter policy? So what happens with Twitter now? I could look all that up and read it, but I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to. Let's find something else that I've got here. Uh, let's go with this one here. I found this one today, and I found it a little bit interesting. Uh, it's about Georgia. Georgia sets early voting record ahead of Senate runoff. Although the U.S. Senate runoff election between Senator Raphael Warnock, Democrat of Georgia, and Republican rival Herschel Walker will not determine the balance of power in the chamber, the result will provide more political leverage to the winning candidate's party during the upcoming legislative ses session. The result of recent midterm elections determine that Democrats have a 50-49 advantage which guarantees the party will have control of the chamber since Vice President Kamala Harris represents a tie-breaking vote. A razor-thin margin in Georgia's race triggered a runoff election scheduled for next month, and voters in the state are clearly motivated to register their preferences. State election officials reported that a record-breaking 239,160 early voters cast ballots statewide on Monday. The total is nearly 6,000 higher than the prior early voting record set in 2018. Warnock, who was elected in another runoff election in January, has spent his limited time in the Senate pushing for the Biden administration leftist agenda. Walker is hoping that President Joe Biden's low approval rating will help seal Warnock's fate in the upcoming election. The former NFL running back is also painting the incumbent senator as a decisive figure who is unfit to represent Georgia in Congress. Divisive figure who is unfit to represent Georgia in Congress. Senator Warnock believes America is a bad country full of racist people. Walker asserted in a campaign ad, I believe we're a great country full of generous people. Warnock wants to divide us. I want to bring us together. You go, Walker. We need that. Meanwhile, Democrat leaders continue to suggest that Georgia's voting system is inherently designed to suppress the minority vote, despite the fact that election turnout continues to break new records. Early this year, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean Bière, I love saying that word, darling, it is so French. Oh, don't you think so? <laughs> Insisted that a high turnout and a voter suppression can take place at the same time. Asserting, one doesn't have to happen on its own. It remains to be seen what candidate's message will resonate with the most voters, but Walker has expressed confidence in his chances to unseat the incumbent Democrat. Well, I like Walker. While Democrats have outspent Republicans and adverse Adversitizing this far, Walker's campaign has reportedly put nearly 16 million into television ads since the general election. Well, he's fighting, and I think he's fighting a good fight. I like his, his uh, sensibility, his common sense, bringing people together, not dividing. GOP Governor Brian Kemp has hit the campaign trail to support of Walker, asking a crowd at a recent Cobb County rally, who do you want to fight for you in the United States Senate? 
Do you want a guy that represents our values like Herschel Walker? Or do you want a guy who stood with Joe Biden 96% of the time? Something to think about. Polling results show that the two candidates remain in a dead heat with just one week until election. And that was some, on December the 6th, I think. How did I miss that? Yeah, it, isn't that supposed to be on December the 6th? I do believe so. Now, that I did read that. Yes, I did. Well, maybe I was dreaming. Lord only knows. Heaven have mercy. <laughs> well, it's good to laugh. Some things are funny. Some things are not so funny. Some things are terrible. But just keep smiling. I'll be back. <laughs>